in the Man Vehicle Lab, the Man Vehicle Lab is really interested in human-machine interactions. My research in particular looks at how do we develop these types of decision-making assist systems and how do we enable the appropriate trust in those systems so that the person can use the information and make the right decision. Right, and so augmenting someone's senses or situational awareness, things like that through sensors and exactly. this haptic technology that we're Yeah, today. so we, we use wearable technology to aid our decision-making. Uh, what exactly, can you, can you sort of walk me through what would happen if I'm wearing this a boot that was equipped with this little system here. If I'm approaching an obstacle or a wall that I can't see or something, like what would I what would I feel and how is that detected by the system? So what we were looking at is to use the vibrations as a sense of I'm getting closer to the obstacle. So what we did is we said, okay, the, the basic map is the closer you get to the obstacle, the higher the magnitude the vibration is and the higher the frequency is. So the further away you won't feel anything. As you get closer to something, you'll feel a small vibration that's pulsing at a really slow rate. And as you get closer, that pulse rate and that magnitude of vibration um, actually increases. It's kind of like Jaws. Yeah. The the da da da. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Kind of that pulse. It gets louder and it gets more frequent. Exactly like Jaws. Right. And that seems uh, especially uh, relevant in a situation like uh, someone walking in a extraterrestrial environment mm -hmm. uh, like the moon where your feedback is extremely limited. You're limited in your field of view, you're limited in what you can feel, your your grip and all that kind of stuff. And so the solution, well the, the solution that you arrived at, which has evolved for a little while, mm -hmm. is largely a, a tactile one. Right, so the system has a few different kinds of sensors embedded in it. It has an accelerometer which we use to de detect more tilt of the foot. It has a proximity sensor and a range finder which allow us to look at basically distances that are closer and then distances that are farther. Are those like ultrasonic or something? I was just, I, I asked because I ultrasonic probably wouldn't work on the moon because there's no atmosphere. That's a good point. So there, there are different limitations in the types of sensors you pick and the types of environments. I mean, one of the big issues that we had with this system is this is a very early prototype system. We used it for our in-lab testing to look at obstacle avoidance. And so this, then, isn't, this isn't actually This isn't moon, going to the moon. moon it's not, no, it's not flying. I was, I'm, just, I'm just curious. Sure. But um, so we, we actually took this system, though, and uh, worked with the Mars Desert Research Society and actually took this out into the desert and was trying this in a real operational environment as opposed to just a lab environment. There's a lot of different uh, questions that we're asking within the lab to uh, help with different decisions that need to be made. This particular project looked at how could we potentially help someone navigate their environment and avoid obstacles at the same time.